So I am down to the last finishing bits on this piece, and I want to add just a little bit of detail over here. And I decided to use the overtwist stitch. Um, this is some stringing silk, and it seems to work really nicely. For this stitch, you need to have something that's um, at least two ply. You want this twist because the secret to this stitch is untwisting it and then twisting it the other direction. And I cut very short pieces because this is rather hard on my hands. Your mileage may vary. But it's a cute little way to do vines. And I have done this with all sorts of threads. Sorry, I had to get my needle threader because I can't get it through there. Um, I have done this with yarns. I have done this with silks, done this with pearls. Uh, it's just up to you to play around with it and see which one you like best. So I've got a very short thing here. I guess maybe this is about a foot long. And even that might be too long sometimes. Let's see, where do I want to put that? I think we're going to put it maybe right here. So you're going to pull it up, and then you're going to take it out of the needle. And this needle might almost be too small but we'll make it work. And if you were gonna twist this more, you'd be twisting it away from you, okay? But I wanna untwist it, so I'm gonna twist it toward me. And as I twist it toward me, it's going to start to shrink up on itself. It's gonna untwist and then retwist. And really, it would be like you were kind of getting to this, this little end of it here if you were undoing it all, except we want to keep it together. And sometimes I have to wet my fingers in order to, you know, hold on to it more, but I'm just twisting it toward me. And I'm holding it with this finger, and then I'm twisting it toward me. And I'm just going to keep doing that. This is also a fun way to use up if you have any short scraps of thread that have a nice ply to it. This does not work with embroidery floss because that is, or any kind of a stranded cotton, it's not gonna work because you need the twist in order to get the effect. So I just continue to twist it toward me and I grab it, twist it toward me. If I don't grab it, it's going to untwist. And that's all I'm doing and see how it starts to get this little gather here. Now you can pull it out and then as you let go, it's gonna crimp up on, on itself. And that is all there is to this little overtwist stitch. And again, it's for me, it's easier if I wet these fingers. Now I have seen people do it and keep the needle threaded. When I do it <laughs> and I have the needle still threaded, I just poke myself and that doesn't work for me. So it's just as easy to take it out and then re-thread the needle. So I'm just about at the end of this wild scape. It's about ready to come out of the hoop and go into its frame. I'm just gonna add a few more little details, like more of these little over twists. See how that goes back and forth. I just love that look. And I tend to leave myself a long tail for tying off. It just makes it easier uh, when I'm on the flip side. Again, your mileage may vary, do whatever works for you. I need to try this with like a really fat yarn, but I just love this. Evidently, this is a medieval stitch, and they would use this for uh, moss in the old tapestries. And then I'm just going, this is, I just kind of, I've gotten used to doing this with the drizzle stitch, so it's not a big deal. It's just gonna be a little bit of a tug because it's not quite the right needle. Oh, come on. Contrary thread, there we go. And I know this is green on green, but hopefully you'll still be able to see it. And look at that. So you can, if you want to stretch it out farther, you can tack it down. I like the little, you know, piles of it. So that's what I'm going to do is add some more little piles of this overtwist stitch. Give it a try and let me know what you think.